This week on Living Free Alaska, it's time to get the boat ready for the 2024 boating season. Join Gary while he takes you through what is needed to be done each and every spring for a successful boating season of fun on the water. Then come along and join us as we take the boat out to Prince William Sound to hit up a popular spot for snagging some sockeye salmon with friends. Only right here on Living Free Alaska. Welcome to another summer day in South Central Alaska. With friends visiting from Wisconsin, we took an afternoon to drive up to Hatcher's Pass and show them the beauty that lies just beyond our doorstep. With your hand on your heart, please tell me which way to go, cause I sure don't know. Well, peace in hand is a start, but it's a mighty puzzle to With weather conditions perfect, we stopped at Summit Lake in Hatcher Pass and enjoyed watching the paragliders sail across the bright blue sky. With your heart on your sleeve, it's a fine line between letting go and losing control. So I take my Hatcher Pass and the surrounding Talkeetna Mountains are a world-class playground for a wide variety of paraglider pilots of all skill levels. If paragliding is something you've ever wanted to try, there are many local businesses here in the Matsu Valley who can help you check that check mark off your bucket list. With tandem flights and several paragliding instruction classes, you too can find exactly what meets your needs right here in the Matanuska Valley. I can't sleep, but I'm hardly awake. A limbo dance, such a fine romance. But I bet I am slowly waking to see what's real. But for today, we will leave it to the experts. Fly high, my friends. Feel the freedom of flight as you soar into the unknown. With your head on your heart, oh, please tell me where I go. Well, guys, we just got back from our trip to Spokane and uh, kind of got things settled in yesterday a little bit. I started cleaning out my shop right back here around this little boat right here so we can get the boat ready to go on our adventure this weekend. Uh, but there are a few things I need to take care of before we get the boat out of the shop. Uh, I've got to uh, check my brakes, check my axles, grease all them up, and also check the pressure in the uh, tires of the trailer. And then um, we're gonna move up from there and work on the engines a little bit. I've got to do a gear oil change, uh, check the main engine oil, um, water systems, battery systems, and I got to work on the tender way up there on top and ch change out that gear oil as well. So I've got a few things to do with this boat before we take it out for a uh, 
run this weekend. We're hoping to maybe get some salmon and maybe some more halibut. We'll see what happens. No guarantees on any fish. We might just go out for fun. I don't know. I'm not sure. But uh, follow along uh, as uh, we, as I, work on the boat to get things ready to go. Um, anytime you have a boat, there's always maintenance with it. There's always upkeep. And uh, I'm just trying to be on top of that for this season. Okay, well I got the uh, brake drums and the brake calipers off and I found quite a bit of uh, damage to the brakes. And there is some brake parts there, brake pads. They're not supposed to be broken up like that. They're supposed to be all in kind of one piece. And then there's another one over here. You can see broken up and in chunks. Actually I had to pull some chunks out of the caliper over here that was in the, cal in the piston of the caliper. So that will get replaced. And then the third one up here, I don't know what was going on with this one, but the inside pad wasn't worn much, but the outside pad was worn quite a bit, and the outside pad actually caused some of the issue. There is an issue on this rotor right here. You can see it's got some scratches in it, but busted out as much as I could. And now uh, we're headed to town, and uh, I've got to go to uh, the supply store to get brake pads. So we're going to head in there. I might look at batteries too, because uh, the boat's in need of some house batteries. Oh, look who showed up. Hi there, babe. It's a boat. Bust out another thousand. Well, the brake pads aren't going to be another thousand. Can't, can't guarantee the batteries. <laughs> so, hey, oh. I'm saving you several thousand by doing this work myself. Yes, you are. I guess. So, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. So, you know, how, to, how where can you take a 10,000 pound, well, no, on trailer, it's like 14,000 pound boat. To get service like this. Well, there's places. There's places, but my my shop works just fine too. <laughs> I'm you're you're a lot cheaper. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll take payment in other ways. How's that sound, folks? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. I have to go in the ta into town as well to get a couple things for our rally coming up. Sure. <sighs> it's never ending. She's busy doing that. I'm busy playing around with toys. Wow, isn't that great? Welcome back to the shop. Uh, yesterday, our little trip to town and uh, a bunch of other stuff just kind of piled up and I didn't get a chance to get back to working on the boat. Uh, so we're jumping on this this morning. Uh, yesterday, I had to go into town to get some new brake shoes for the boat trailer. Um, they only had about half as many as I needed. So um, I ordered more. They should be in later today. So at some point, again, I got to run into town and uh, get enough brake shoes for the other side um also batteries i'm gonna i've got to get up there and take a look at the battery bay to see if i can fit in the battery that i want to fit in there uh which is a battleborne lithium battery um so we're gonna take a look at that in a little bit but first i want to get these brakes taken care of so uh we'll dive into that now <music> Well, that's a wrap for this uh, port side of the boat trailer. 
I've got all the brakes uh, dialed in pretty well. I believe all the calipers, well, <laughs> I don't believe, I know all the calipers went on nice and easily. Uh, rotated the tires a little bit, so I went just one position forward. So the back tire went to the middle, middle tire went to the front, front tire came to the back. And uh, I like to do that once in a while on the boat trailer just to kind of even out the wear of the tires. You know, it's a good thing to do. So now on to the other side, got to take care of all that. Same thing on the other side. So I'm going to spare you the video and uh, I'm just going to get to it. And then uh, we'll jump into the battery uh, bay next. Oh, it's been a busy day so far today. Uh, I believe I told you that the uh, all the brakes are done. Uh, I got the port side brakes all replaced. They were a mess. Every one of them need to re needed to be uh, serviced, uh, the pads replaced. Went to the starboard side and they were all good. I'm still stumped as to why that is. I gotta check the brake lines. Maybe bleed the brakes a little bit, see if there's some air in there um, on this uh, passenger side of the trailer. The uh, brakes just, they're not worn down at all. So kind of crazy, kind of strange. Um, also got to the uh, engines here, changed the uh, gear case oil and uh, that, was easy enough to drain the old oil out and put the new oil in. We've got a nice little drain pan here that I use to drain everything into. And uh, that's all done. Wanted to start the engines up, but I uh, ran into an issue where I needed to actually get new batteries in there. Um, as I had mentioned before, I was going to put new batteries in. Uh, and uh, I did that. And I'll show you what I did. All right, so we're up here on the back deck of the boat. We're looking over the engines towards the stern of the boat and in here I've got a tackle by a uh, tackle box bay and below that is where the batteries reside down in here well as you see I've got some Trojan AGM batteries in there now previously we had some uh, interstate Flooded that acid batteries. You can see one way down over there. That's a port. That's the starboard side starting in a uh, battery. It's still good. And way down over here is another battery for the starboard side engine. It was showing some uh, voltage drop and not doing so hot, so I replaced that too. So I've got three new batteries in this system. I think I mentioned before that I was going to try to put lithium batteries in the boat for the house battery bank. Well, I'm, I was only able to do that. Um, the charger that is in this boat, it's a really good um, charger for the marine industry and the boats and this and that, but it doesn't have a lithium charging profile. Uh, and the way the uh, multi-bank charging system is set up, uh, the house bank is a primary, and then after the house bank is charged, it goes to the starting batteries and then the auxiliary batteries. And uh, with that being said, the house bank has to be a type of battery that the battery charger, the inverter, will charge. Um, so I couldn't go with the lithium battery, unfortunately. Uh, we had the battery, but I can't use it on the boat at this point, maybe later down the road. But it's going to be a lot later down the road because these AGMs are supposed to be, I'm sorry, these Trojan AGMs are supposed to be very good batteries. It should last a long time as well. So... <clears throat> We'll see how it goes. Uh, but I'm excited for these. There's a, these are a little bit larger than what was in here before, and it was a tight fit, I tell you that, to get everything hooked up. But um, it's been on for a couple hours now, charging, and everything seems to be topped off nicely and doing very well. Going to unplug them overnight and uh, see, see what happens overnight. Um, not simulating a draw, but just see what happens when there's no uh, charge and maintenance on them. So that's the battery details. Now I've got to sort out my tackle. I've robbed from a couple different boxes to fill other boxes to do other little trips and this and that. And uh, I need to put everything back. So that's my next little project.
Good morning, folks. It's about 5 a.m. It's been a mad rush to get this boat ready, but I believe we've got her ready to go. Beautiful up here right now. Just the sun's rising. It's just starting to hit some of the tree tips here and here around us. So quiet. And we're just about ready to load up and take a little trip down to Prince William Sound to do some fishing. We're heading out the main bay this morning. We're gonna go snagging for some sockeye salmon, some nice red, fleshy, meaty salmon. And then if we've got time, we might drop a hook or two for some halibut later on. So it's gonna be a great day. We're really looking forward to being on the boat. Beautiful weather. It's gonna be nice and smooth and calm out there. Oh, so looking forward to it. These last couple days, been so busy working on the boat trailer and the boat and everything like that, getting it all ready. It's been so worth it. It's gonna be a great day. I hope you guys enjoy. Come on along. Fish with us a little, a little bit. Well, good morning. As you heard Gary say, we are going fishing. It's now 5.20 in the morning. We have a 5.30 a.m. planned departure. Hopefully, we'll get out of here on time. We do have uh, four guests with us on the boat today. We have um, our classmates from high school, Rachel and her husband, that are joining us, as well as our good friends, Tiff and Steve. So we're gonna be a full boat, but uh, our plan is to catch everyone their limit of salmon today. So what, that means we're gonna have 36, 36 salmon fish. on board. Yeah. So lots of catching, hopefully ahead, and then maybe some more with some halibut. I sure hope so. It's a three hour drive to Whittier, so uh, we'll get on the road here shortly. Yeah. Well, we've made it in the water. Uh, it's a little after nine, about probably 9.30 now, actually. And Captain is back on the boat. Hello, hello, hello. You had a quick transfer. Oh, it was a nice, nice little transfer from the parking lot to the uh, launch. Normally Nor it's a mile long walk, but he had I, had, a ride. I had a ride this time. <laughs> I like that. So um, we've done all our safety checks and we're about to leave the dock.
Oh, the shrines. Oh, uh oh, two fish on. Fish off. Fish off. <laughs> <laughs> As much as we would have loved to grab more footage of our fishing trip, we were both needed to help with fish retrieval, keeping all the fish appropriately tagged to each person who caught it so no one went over their six-person limit, as well as catch our own fish to keep. At times we had two or three fish on lines at the same time, which as you can only imagine, create a little chaos on board at times. Regardless, what an amazing day spent on the water with wonderful friends. We are thankful for the bounty that the sea provided for us all that day and the memories made with our friends. It was a great start to the 24 boating season and we can only hope that we have several more trips out just like this before the dreaded winter returns. Well, how was fishing? Well, we're filleting fish. So, so that means you caught something. So, so we caught something. Yes. <laughs> yep. Uh, it was good. Um, six people on board. We uh, got 34 fish. So that's uh, five limits. Plus a pretty respectable four. Yeah. So we're happy. These will all go home to feed three different families. Uh, that are on board today with us so we're glad that we can help these families out to fill their freezer uh, especially scott and rachel who come in from the lower 48 and don't have a chance to get quality alaska salmon just at their hand so it's kind of special for them and, uh, tiff and steve they're they're alaskan they love the salmon so <laughs> this is great for them. and we put them to work and we put them to work that's a small one, yeah. While in such a beautiful location, it only seemed appropriate to do another release of our friend Bill's ashes. Well, Bill, we are here in Prince William Sound in Long Bay. It's uh, right off of Colrose Packet Package Passage, and um, I figured this would be a beautiful spot for you to rest eternally in this part of Prince William Sound right in front of a waterfall, and um, yeah, all right, here we go, let's see, no wind, no wind, no wind, let's go this way, <laughs> all right, here we go, Ooh. oh, 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 those 
Come on for a ride. <laughs> Bill, go, 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 go. <laughs> Well, welcome back to the house. Oh, we got home really late last night. What? What? It was about almost midnight. Eleven, one thirty. Yesterday was a long one. We were on the road at five forty-five in the morning. We didn't get home till about eleven thirty p.m. Uh, we basically offloaded the boat and went straight to bed. But this morning, we did not load the boat. Well, we just got the fish off, got them in the fridge, and then went to bed. That's more like it. Yeah. But this morning, Gary is processing all the salmon that we caught. And all for all six of us, we got 34 fish. Uh, we could have caught 36, but Rachel, she was done after four. I don't blame her. It, it was a long day. a long day. And um, it totaled over 90 pounds of filleted uh, take home. So not bad. Each fish uh, weighed about four pounds average. Some were under, some were over, but that was a pretty good haul for just three and a half hours at the fishing grounds. It was a lot of fun. We had a damn good haul uh, today. Right now I'm just uh, processing. Uh, this is this is actually Scott and Rachel's uh, haul of fish and uh, I'm salvaging fillets. <laughs> So now what they'll have is, they have a stack of fillets there, but they have some fillets that were a little bit on the uh, uh, mutilated side. So I'm skinning them and chunking up the meat um, so they can have burgers or whatever they want to do. So see, there's, there's, there's a skinned salmon and here's a somewhat mutilated fillet. <laughs> Very so, nice. Get all the meat I can. I'm just trying to salvage all the meat I can. You know, they, they, they worked hard for it. They're gonna, they're gonna, they're getting a uh, airplane safe uh, storage container for the fish right now. We put dry ice on it when they leave tomorrow. So they're gonna take it home with them and enjoy some Alaska salmon with their family and friends. The weather wasn't perfect, nor was it what it was forecasted to be, but. We all still had an amazing time. We may have got a little bit wet, a little bit cold, whatever the heck, but we were out there with some great friends. We had an amazing time with the two couples, Scott and Rachel and Steve and Tiffany, just so much fun. We were able to fill our freezers with about, with about 30 pounds of fish per couple. That's just awesome. And this is some of the best food that you can get in the world. So thanks a lot for watching guys. Please, hey, do not for, please, do not forget to like and subscribe. You know, when you watch the videos, hit that subscribe button, uh, comment, give us some questions, whatever you want to know, we'll try to answer. And I'm not being aggressive with a knife. I'm just, it's in my <laughs> hand right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, until next week, guys, have a great one, and we'll see you in the next see ya. one. Thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like, Subscribe and hit the notification bell so you are notified whenever we post again. And lastly, we hope that you will join us here next time on Living Free Alaska.